I live across the street from Letterback. I want to know why my seventh grade son does not have a permanent math teacher. I want to know why there's not enough security for my children to feel safe and be safe when they go to school. Why there's no crossing guards present at the beginning and end of the school day. Why is Utterback brochures offer fine arts programs, but they're not actually giving the classes for my children? Why is there an open gate during lunch, no supervision, and our children are running out of that open gate? Why is the behavioral problem so bad that our children are running your schools and not your staff? Why are students bringing and smoking marijuana, pills, in the school and nothing is being done? As I ask you these questions today of why my two children that are standing with me in front of you, I'm going to also ask federal judges social media, news, anybody that will listen and tell me why my children cannot be safe and why I have four more children that need to go through the system and have they're going to be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Demaris Garcia, followed by Todd Brown and Vanetta Martin. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Damaris Garcia. Um, I am a single parent of six kids. Uh, I, as a parent, am very concerned about a few things going on at Outerback. One of the most important ones is not having enough teachers, or may I say permanent teachers, for such important classes such as science and math. Uh, Why are constantly having subs for these important subjects? One big example is the science teacher at Outerback um, has been there almost three years, going to be three years um, this year. So what's next? Another sub at the school for this subject? Uh, why haven't we filled this position in three years? Knowing that in October 2015, it was court ordered by a federal court that being a magnet school, they needed to fill this position. But not only that, but fill them with experienced teachers for these classes. I personally have been uh, affected by not having Otterback fully staffed. My 17-year-old daughter graduated from Otterback in 2014. And due to not having the correct education at Otterback, uh, she fell behind as soon as she hit high school because of that. When she hit high school, she felt lost and had no idea what she was being taught. Now she is attending a charter school, catching up. I do not th I want this happening to my daughter, Celeste, which is standing right next to me. She is 12 years old and attending Otterback as well have another three younger kids that, you know, eventually they'll be headed down to our back as well. Uh, we as parents understand um, it is our responsibility to educate our children, but the other half is the school and teacher's responsibility, since it is part of our kids' life to attend school. I also want to know and have answers of what is or where do all the funds that this so-called magnet schools are going to. We also have very little monitors that is not enough to look after all the kids at this school. The school is a mess and students do as they please. Teachers have no authority over these kids. And the few teachers that do care and fight for the students and to have a better school at TUSD keep getting rid of, um, TUSD keeps getting rid of them instead of recognizing them, their effort into having a better school and environment for everyone. Um, I really appreciate you guys hearing you know, as parents talk, and you know, um, as a parent, you know, I've really never been too involved in it, but I do understand that, you know, I have other kids, and you know, I have to make it a better, a better district as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name's Benita Martinez. I have three kids I go to out of back six, seven, and eighth grade. We need qualified, certified teachers to teach our children in math, science, and wherever else needed in the school. Our children in math and science are not learning because we keep on having substitutes come and go in our school, and that's not good teaching for our children. We deserve teachers to teach our children, and they deserve it. Mr. Sanchez gets 32,000 for a vacation, but we don't get any teachers for our children. Where is the half a million dollars a year going? It's not going to the teachers. It's not getting things done for the school. Where is the money going? Can you answer that? We need crossing arts for the safety of our children. Self-contained teachers are leaving. What are you going to do without teachers? Lose your students? We should have priority in this 
and is a magnet school. We deserve this for our children that wants to learn to study. Where's the money to fix up the big theater we have in the school so children can dance, do drama, acting, etc. We need things for our children, and we're not getting them. Why are we having our children jumping gates, leaving, hiding in bathrooms, doing, doing drugs? Where is the security that we need? Our kids are in our hands. Our kids are in your hands when they hit that front door of the school. Why can't our kids be safe? What are you going to do if something happens to our kids while they're in your hands? Our children are supposed to be safe, have the security, be protected. Where is all of that in the school? There is fights in the school to where nothing's being done without, with, about it. One seventh grade student told me that they don't want to be there anymore because of not having teachers and the students. My daughter comes home crying because she don't know how to do math. It makes me sad that her and all the other kids are failing and not learning. Open your eyes. We need teachers, security cross guards. Our children deserve. And our children deserve to be safe and learn. Our children here at our back deserve the best. Thank you. Thank you. David Morales, followed by Lillian Fox. And um, Ms. Fox is my last card, so if you wanted to speak, um, please feel free to submit a card. <clears throat> so, I mean, this goes beyond politics, and all the time, I get even more and more nowadays, teachers and parents reaching out to me, and they're afraid of retaliation. I mean, for those of you who are listening, I mean, she's not just a kid on this laptop right now, like he was when um, other people are speaking, which is rude, I think. But, um... There's major problems in this district. There are kids at risk right now. You can type that into your computer, um, Crystal Foster. Um, this is ridiculous, okay? This is going on way too much. There's kids being brutalized right now in schools. Now, other back, you just heard, <clears throat> let me remind you of some stuff. A year ago, while you guys were playing your games at the casino ballroom and and saying that the plaintiffs and the special master were hurting the, the, the magnet schools. Let me remind you what the federal court said. The district shall proceed to fill all vacancies at each of the magnet schools, referred to above, which included Utterback, by November 1st, 2015. Have you done that? Have you done that, Kevin? No. There's no seventh grade math teacher. Amen. There's, there's no crossing guard, there's no security there. How can you guys sleep at night? This is a court order. You guys want to file for a unitary status next year? The districts shall take steps to ensure the schools and the programs remain fully staffed. Yes. Yes. They don't even get substitute teachers from ESI. You guys pay $21 million for ESI. They don't even get subs. The counselors have to fill the classrooms. Right now at Utterback. Counselors are being monitors. Okay, let's No, it's okay. She speaks for me too. No, Let's okay. go ahead and let the speaker speak. Thank you. I speak for the community, and they are allowed to speak mm -hmm. when I speak. The district shall give its nine schools and programs priority in the placing of teachers and certified staff. The district shall fund each magnet school or program at the funding level set. It should just it should basically fund the magnet program. Is, isn't letter back a, a, a dance magnet? How many magnet? How many dance teachers do they have? None. Is this okay with you guys? This is a violation of the USP. They told you to cut the crap and do what you're supposed to do. You guys have failed to do so while you guys were playing. Then you're going to cut the counselors that fill the, the classrooms with the, when the subs don't show up? What is going on here? This is utter back. This is a community. Instead of being, they should be helped. Not, you shouldn't be like kicking a horse when it's dead. Uh, Miss Fox, and then again, if anyone else wishes to speak, please submit a card. You really are a disgrace. I have been coming Ms. Fox, this board. excuse me. So, no, you, it, there is an actual comment on the back that says, you know, 
I mean, be okay. respectful. But that's okay. I mean, we're being respectful. So I was trying. I was okay. trying to be. I was trying to be accurate. I've been coming before the board for five years complaining about the teacher vacancies. The teacher vacancies have gotten worse and worse under this administration. It has not gotten better. We have never had 220 teacher vacancies in this school district. But the number under this superintendent and under this board has increased steadily. And we don't care. It's really clear. Now, I'm going to talk about 301 performance money. The admin date in the paper this morning was an example of not telling the truth with numbers. The, uh, here's a little graph that shows what's happened to 301 performance money on your watch, on Sanchez's watch. What's happened is you've paid out less money every year than Petacom did. And the amount of surplus 301 money has increased every year. This year you have $22 million in 301 performance money. Let me put that in perspective. Your total 123 money is 9.7 million. You have twice as much money in uns unspent performance money than you have in, <clears throat> in one, two, three money. Last year, you only paid out 20% of the 301 performance money you have. That is, is disgraceful. I'm sorry. There's no excuse for it. The ad this morning was not the truth. You can say anything you want about what you pay teachers, but you're not quoting the total. And the fact is, you've paid out less performance money to the teachers in this district than any other superintendent ever paid out. Everybody else proceeding you was better. Sorry. Betts Putnam Milaco is the last speaker, unless anyone wants to submit a card. Hi, my name is Betts Putnam Milaco. It breaks my heart to have the parents at Utterback because the parents at Utterback were once the parents at Holiday. And of course, I've come up before this board many times talking about similar conditions at Holiday. So I do wonder when the schools in that part of town are going to receive the funding that they deserve. In, a, in, in trying to find out an answer to that question, about two and a half months ago, if not more, I put in a Freedom of Information Act uh, request to find out what magnet school expenditures were. I was responded to a month and a half later with a budget. So, I, respectfully, if your finance department doesn't know the difference between a budget and actual expenditures, we are in deep trouble. I have I re, I resubmitted the Freedom of Information Act um, and have received no information whatsoever. As I look at the presentation that we're about to get, it is clear that you have those numbers. So I don't know why it's so hard for a member of the public to actually get them. I have never looked in to see if there's some reasonable time beyond which it's considered non-compliance with Freedom of Information Act gathering um, to not get a response back from Freedom of Information Act. And I know that it's not the person in the office because I know that she does good work. And so I wonder who it is and when we will find out how much the district is actually spending on each magnet school compared to what is budgeted. Um, Thanks. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak? Do you know? Yeah. If you could please. Um, you can go ahead and speak, and then if you could please fill out the card afterwards. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Tony Mosley. I'm at 15160 Spring Street, Tucson, Arizona, 85719. I am a counselor at Outback Middle School. I am very, very frustrated right now because I just came out of the meeting where I was challenged as to being the organizer for these parents to come to this meeting tonight and to speak to you guys. That wasn't my role. I was accused of that because someone showed up at a meeting and perpetrated as though they were there to listen to the conversation at hand, but we all know that they were spies. These parents asked me questions, they gave them the answers, and the reason why these parents came to me because they don't trust they don't trust that they're getting the answers they should be getting from the district. I am a product of TUSD. As a matter of fact, most of you know who I am as a result of something we did back in the 70s called basketball state champions. And I'm very proud of that. And my sadness comes because I came back here to give back to this community and this neighborhood. And I've all I got is resistance, resistance after resistance. I feel for these kids. I see these kids every day. And these kids have been labeled as animals. The big thing that's being told about Utterback right now is that it's called utter hell. 
And that's very frustrating to me because I see these kids come every day with a heart to learn and want to do something with their lives. But well, how can we really serve these kids when we don't even provide the teachers for them? How are they going to go into high school and be able to have the, we tell them to get excited about STEM programs. How can you be excited about STEM when you don't have the basic foundation of the math and science? And then our kids get into high school and they drop and they say, oh, it must be the teachers. When are we going to stop pointing the finger and really take responsibility for our choices? This might be the last time I have a talk with anybody at, at TUSD, simply because I, all of a sudden, they want to come after the messenger. What they should be listening to is the message from these parents. It's not worried about who organized it, but worried about what the message is. That's my frustration. You guys know this is true. You know it's been, we're like an island over there. I say this all the time. We're an island with an SOS sign, and they just ships just go right by. Mr. Sanchez, you and I have had conversations. I've been very respectful to you. You have shown me respect, but I really appreciate the fact that you come down and really see what's going on and be a part of the process and not just come through for a couple of minutes and say everything's fine and dandy. Because we got a lot of work to do down there. There has been some great things. We have a principal intern right now who's doing a great job, and I'm ready to give those people credit, but we still have a long way to go. These parents are frustrated. 30 seconds, thank you. These parents are very frustrated. And instead of us pointing the fingers and saying it's not our responsibility, we should all remember if there's a pointing finger at someone else, there's three coming back at you. And tell the kids those simple things and we should learn those simple lessons. So I apologize if it's coming across as frustration, but people say, well, you're bitter. No, I'm not bitter. Bitter is when you know there's nothing can be done. Frustration is when you know there's something better can be, but no one does anything about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close the call to the audience. Is this okay with you guys? This is a violation of the USP. They told you to cut the crap and do what you're supposed to do. You guys have failed to do so while you guys were playing. Then you're going to cut the counselors that fill the, the classrooms with the, when the subs don't show up? What is going on here? This is utter back. This is a community. Instead of being, they should be helped. People might be able to believe that. Dr. Holly and Dr. Sanchez just presented together at the new teacher college at Columbia University. And so the fact is we are working together, we are complying. And that's, I mean, it, it serves people to have you believe that it's not working. Because there's a lot of money made in this case. I think the hardest votes I take are some of the legal fees. As a teacher, a public teacher myself, who makes a teaching salary, it absolutely is the hardest, hardest part of my job. Um, it, it's a reality thing of working with. And we have to get through this. We are on schedule. Like I said, in 14 15, we were at 54.4% on schedule work complete. And we're now about 85% complete with a schedule to go for unitary status in September 2016. Please, let's keep our leadership intact so we can get through this. Money. 